North Korea is its own terrifying place as a whole. And although there are plenty of mysteries surrounding the country, what little we do know is scary. Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel, I'm your host Emily and today we'll be counting down our list of the top 10 terrifying places in North Korea that are pure evil. Number 10. Ryu Young Hotel Often regarded as the ugliest building in the world, which I can agree with, the Ryu Young Hotel is a 180 story structure in Pyongyang. The hotel was started in 1987 and stopped in 1993, and it seems unlikely that it will ever be finished as a functioning hotel. The building consists of 3,000 suites and 5 revolving restaurants, at least as it was planned. Currently, it sits at the heart of the city as a concrete shell, but its massive size, aka 1,082 feet, makes it difficult to ignore as it dominates the skyline. But if you ask anyone who lives in the city, they deny it exists, even though it's clearly there. Tourists traveling by taxi have found it impossible to use the hotel as a landmark because no one admits that the building is there. It's even airbrushed out of official photographs. And even if it ever is finished, who is supposed to stay there? Even ignoring the low wages of the average North Korean, there's no real tourism industry to speak of, so it's just strange. Number 9. The Arch of Reunification The Arch of Reunification was erected in 2001 to commemorate Kim Il-sung's proposal of a reunited Korea. The arch stands above the reunification highway, which leads from Pyongyang to the demilitarized Terrorized Zone DMZ. The concrete arc features two Korean women dressed in traditional outfits holding up a sphere with a map of unified Korea on it. It's one of the more thoughtful gestures from the dictatorship, so thoughtful in fact that it almost makes you forget about those tunnels they dug leading into South Korea. Almost. Anyway, the arch is strange for two reasons. One, the highway it stands above is largely unused. Tourists in the capital city often remark how the highway has large lanes but little traffic. The use of so few cars is attributed to the poor financial standing of the average citizen, so bikes are a more common form of transportation. But the streets are so empty that tour guides will cut across lanes on either side to avoid the numerous potholes. There are also people that believe that the arches have a dual purpose. Purpose. According to some, the arch was constructed with explosives inside, and I honestly wouldn't put it past them doing this. Number 8. Web Cafes North Korea doesn't really have internet access. Their websites, almost all of them government controlled, are as secluded as the country itself, and for many, the only means of accessing them are through web cafes. North Korea is unable to host their own web pages, and as a result, they rely instead on China, Japan, Germany, and even the United States for servers. As of 2007, Quang Mai Young only permitted access to a little over 30 different different pages. They don't offer any connections to the outside world, and instead requests can be made for content. If accepted, Quang Meng Yong downloads, censors, and re-uploads the content. However, Quang Meng Yong remains unattainable for most people. 90% of North Koreans are completely unfamiliar with the internet. While it's theoretically possible to pick up a satellite connection from other Asians' ISPs, smuggling the needed components into the country is next to impossible. For tourists, hotels in the city offer email services, however users aren't permitted to type their messages directly. Instead, they must be written and handed to an employee, and many tourists have noted that their messages are never received and probably are never sent, which is, wow. What a shocker. Number 7. Yongbyon Nuclear Facility One of North Korea's most controversial sites is the Yongbyon Nuclear Scientific Research Center. Yongbyon is North Korea's main nuclear facility. It houses the country's first nuclear reactors and produced the fuel used in the country's nuclear tests in 2006 and 2009. The center produced the fissile material for North Korea's six nuclear weapon tests from 2006 to 2017, and since 2009 is developing indigenous light water reactor nuclear nuclear power station technology. As of January 2019, the main facilities did not appear to be operating. However, in August 2021, the International Atomic Energy Agency reported North Korea appeared to have restarted the 5MW reactor, so that's fun. Number 6. Kim Jong-il's Tomb 
When North Korea's great leader Kim Il-sung suddenly died in 1994, the country was in a state of staged national mourning that had never been seen before on such a scale. Then when his successor, the great leader's son Kim Jong-il, the dear leader, suddenly died as well at the end of 2011, the scenes of public mourning even topped those in 1994. Now they lay to rest in the same building, but with everything in North Korea, you just can't go there and visit. One tourist got the chance and said, you're at the mercy of your tour guides and what they've been told they can show you. When we went, Kim Jong-il was laying in state in his glass coffin. Somber music piped through hidden loudspeakers, not a word was spoken. Guards made sure the procedures were orderly and appropriate. We had to line up in fours and bow three times at the great leader's feet and both sides but not the head, as this is regarded as disrespectful apparently. You also can't take photographs. Now, that description just sounds overall spooky, and I don't think I'd want to go there even if I could. Number 5. Hwasong Camp The 212 square mile prison camp is believed to house 10,000 people, many of them political prisoners. Reportedly, no one has ever escaped. Prisoners are exploited for hard, dangerous, and deadly labor in mining, logging, and agriculture. According to Mr. Lee, a former security officer in Hwasong Camp, the inmates were overworked and they had very little time to rest. Prisoners had to work all day until they fulfilled their quotas and attend self-criticism meetings afterward. Often they were allowed to sleep only for four hours at night. Mr. Lee witnessed many fatal accidents in the workplace and information is extremely limited as the camp has always been a maximum security camp under strict control and surveillance. An unidentified teenager reported how he was sent to the camp with his entire family at age 13. He witnessed his father being beaten cruelly and his mother and sisters being taken advantage of by security guards. Residents from nearby villages have heard about the horrific conditions inside the camp, but were never allowed to get near the camp. Number 4. Ki Jong Dong Ki Jong Dong, better known as Propaganda Village, is a truly creepy place in North Korea. Built in the 1950s, Ki Jong Dong is situated on North Korea's end of the DMZ and has a grand total of 200 people living in it. Well, that's if you believe the North Korean government. In reality, there are absolutely no residents. Zero. It's completely empty. The village was designed to show off the virtues of North Korean lifestyle to South Korean villages in view and to lead to defection. The brightly painted concrete buildings were much more lavish than rural villagers in either country could afford. Each building is wired for electricity with lights running on a timer. Skeleton crews appear at night to maintain the buildings and give the general appearance that someone might actually be living there. However, anyone with a set of binoculars can see that the buildings are empty, some completely lacking floors, ceilings, and even glass windows. Whether or not the village has led to defection is unknown, but it's hard to imagine anyone falling for the trick nearly 60 years later. Number 3. Kim Il-sung Stadium Kim Il-sung Stadium is a multi-purpose stadium located in Pyongyang, the capital city of North Korea. It's the largest stadium in the world and can house 150,000 people. Now, I know what you're thinking. How can a stadium be scary? Well, what it's used for is truly haunting. Rarely, if ever, are there any sports events held there as the stadium is mostly used for propaganda and military parades. During these parades, there are many huge images shown in the stands, but it's actually just North Koreans holding up a piece of cardboard to create the image. They have to stand there holding up the cardboard for hours. It's also been alleged that traitors of the state have been taken into the stadium to be paraded around and have never been seen again. In particular, a group of generals disappeared in the stadium after an attempted coup attempt. And later on that day, smoke could be seen coming out of the stadium. Number 2. Room 39 Room 39 is an organization meant to get foreign currency for the leader through any means necessary. It was established by the nation's forefather, Kim Il-sung, in the late 1970s. The agents there would manufacture drugs, counterfeit notes, deal arms, and traffic humans to fund their leader's lavish lifestyle. They hired chemists to produce which are then smuggled to Japan, China, and across Asia. The mysterious organization is estimated to bring Kim Jong-un between, between $500 million and $1 billion per year, enabling him to buy political support and fund nuclear programs. With the revenue from Room 39, Kim never goes hungry. While his people starve to death, Kim enjoys dishes like foie gras, lobster, and caviar. Overall, this is just insane to me how they can get away with this. And coming in at number 1 is Camp 22. 
Camp 22 was a prison camp in North Korea that was reported to have been closed in 2012, but I'm not too sure I believe that. The camp was a maximum security area, completely isolated from the outside world. The camp was founded around 1965 and is surrounded by an inner 3,300 volt electric fence and an outer barbed wire fence with traps and hidden nails between the two fences. The camp was controlled by roughly 1,000 guards and 500 to 600 administrative agents. The guards were equipped with many weapons to make sure that the prisoners behaved. In the 1990s, there was an estimated 50,000 prisoners in the camp. Prisoners were mostly people who criticized the government, people deemed politically unreliable, or purged senior party members. Based on the guilt by association principle, they are often imprisoned together with their whole family, including children and the elderly, and including any children born in the camp. All prisoners were detained until they died, they were never released. A former guard described the conditions in the camp as harsh and life threatening. He likened the prisoners to walking skeletons, dwarfs, and cripples in rags. He estimated that about 30% of the prisoners had deformities, such as torn off ears, smashed eyes, crooked noses, and faces covered with cuts and scars resulting from beatings and other mistreatment. Around 2,000 prisoners he said had missing limbs, but even prisoners who needed crutches to walk were still forced to work. Prisoners had to do hard physical labor in agriculture, mining, and inside factories from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m., followed by ideological re-education and self-criticism sessions. Almost 30,000 people reportedly died of starvation at this camp in 2012. This is literally so disgusting, and it makes me so upset that humans could treat other people that way. Ugh. Well that's all for our list of the top 10 terrifying places in North Korea that are pure evil. Would you ever want to visit North Korea? Personally, I'm good. I do not have any desire to go there because it sounds awful. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and while you're down there, why not give us a like and subscribe to our channel. I'm your host Emily, and I'll see you next time. Peace.